Let me begin by saying that uh, I'm very pleased indeed to welcome all of you here at this Giants Club Summit, and indeed more so to thank my colleagues who have left their very busy schedules in order to be with us here today, and also other international visitors who have accepted to come and join us in solidarity. And indeed, for those of you who are visiting Kenya for the first time, let me extend a very warm welcome to you all. This historic meeting heralds a new beginning, not just for Kenya, but across a number of elephant range states. Between us, the initial Giants Club member countries of Uganda, Gabon, Kenya, and Botswana, we hold more than half of Africa's remaining elephants. Therefore, I believe that the decisions we take here will determine the future of our elephants on this continent. I personally am particularly proud to be associated with an initiative that seeks to combat poaching by bringing together leaders of African elephant range states, heads of major businesses operating across Africa, and the best elephant protection experts to provide a combination of the political will financial resources, and technical capacity that we also urgently require in order to save our African elephants. The conservation of the African elephant is not going to be an easy matter. These giants must contend with many threats. Illegal killing for ivory and other products, conflict with humans, and loss, as well as fragmentation, of habitat. For some elephant populations, the magnitude of these threats is such that many today predict they may be lost entirely. But I do believe that if we act, as would be required of all of us, we can ensure that they are not lost. It is important for all of us to appreciate the wider dimensions of the poaching of elephants and even other wildlife that we have on this continent. There is convincing evidence that poaching is aided by international criminal syndicates. It fuels corruption. It undermines the rule of law as well as security. And it even provides funding for other transnational crime. This directly threatens the capacity of our nations to achieve sustainable and meaningful social economic development. And that is why my government has declared a total war against poaching. But that alone is not enough. We need to mobilize friends and partners across the globe to join us in the fight. The Giants Club has already proved itself a very key ally in this fight. It is my understanding that this club's key objective is to provide technical and financial support for effective frontline protection of African elephants and to support in the delivery of the African Elephant Action Plan. I want to commend the club for its choice of four key areas of intervention in the conservation and management of the African elephant. These being largely training, resourcing, and mentoring frontline rangers and the judiciary to protect elephants and the species that share their range at source, Secondly, is in helping African states 
join the Elephant Protection Initiative audit and to audit their ivory stockpiles and to put these stockpiles beyond any economic use. Thirdly, is to lobby key influencers to encourage the reduction, if not the total elimination, as we believe here in Kenya, in demand for ivory. And lastly, creating long-term sustainable finance for the protection and conservation of the African elephant. The choice of these areas by the club encourages all of us in the fight for the elephant, and indeed resonates well with our own priorities. Indeed, as you are aware, the Giants Club seeks to respond to a number of calls for action, and amongst these is the adaptation of the African Elephant Action Plan, the resolutions of the Kasane meeting in 2015 in Botswana, and the Brazzaville Declaration in Congo in 2015, to mention but just a few. All these steps are aimed at addressing the plight of our African elephant. I am pleased also that the leadership of the Giants Club is fully on board with the pragmatic actions proposed to secure the remaining populations of the African elephant and other equally threatened wildlife species as well. We here in Kenya are implementing a number of measures directed at combating the elephant poaching and illegal trade in elephant ivory within and across our borders. For instance, the enactment of the Wildlife Conservation and Management Act of 2013, which imposed much stiffer penalties on wildlife-related crime, the development and implementation of the conservation and management strategy for the elephant in Kenya, covering the period of 2012 to 2021, as well as the inventory of our national elephant ivory and rhino horn stockpile, with a total of 135,784 kilos of elephant ivory and 1,519 kilos of rhino horns tallied. The countrywide audit was concluded and conducted in compliance with our national wildlife law and also in fulfillment of international obligations under the Con uh, Convention of International Trade on Endangered Species, CITES provisions, and as part of our commitment to saving elephants, Kenya is a signatory to the Elephant Protection Initiative, whose key purpose is to provide financial support for the implementation of the African Elephant Action Plan and to rally for the closure of domestic ivory markets in participating states and eventually on all future international trade. Despite these efforts, however, the future of the African elephant and rhino is far from secure, so long as the demand for their products continues to exist. Any sale of elephant ivory and rhino horn, including within legal domestic markets, is inherently likely to increase the risk of and to our elephant and rhino populations. Therefore, this summit and the burning of Kenya's elephant, ivory, and rhino horn stockpile over which myself and my colleagues will preside this weekend shows my government's strong commitment to fighting wildlife crime and putting wildlife products beyond any economic use. It is part of these initiatives, and as part of these initiatives, my government's proposal during the 17th meeting of the CITES Convention in Johannesburg, South Africa, 
later this year to develop a list of all populations of the African elephants in CITES. And the main gist of our proposal is a total ban, as Dr. Leakey has said, on the trade in elephant ivory. This will ensure that Africa's elephants are accorded the highest possible level of protection. And I'm very glad that as Dr. Leakey was making his comments, my brother, President Bongo, was already whispering into my ear as to how he thinks we should go ahead and start planning how we're going to work on that. And I appreciate that. The protection of giants, therefore, requires the combined wisdom of our elders, as well as the hope of our youth. We have not abandoned our legacy and will not abandon our legacy to the whims of the market, but rather, today we begin taking bold steps, indeed giant steps, which merit the praise and will merit the praise of our ancestors and which will inspire our own youth to recognize the intrinsic value of our national heritage. To lose our elephants would be to lose a key part of the heritage that we hold in trust. Quite simply, we will not allow it. We will not be the Africans who stood by as we lost our elephant population. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let me express my deepest appreciation to all of you who have made this summit possible and who continue the fight to save our elephants. And let me single out our own Cabinet Secretary, Professor Judith Wahungu and her team for coordinating us so well across government as well as other partners. I would also like to thank our media partners, Space for Giants as well, and a host of others, far too many to name them here, but to say thank you very much for the wonderful work, and may God bless you all as we continue in this endeavor. Thank you very much.